Hello everyone and welcome back to Sew If I Sew or welcome if you're new, my name is Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related and today we are doing my, more well, quarterly but six monthly catch up with my Make 9. So as you guys know, one of my things with my Make 9 is I don't want it to be a challenge I revisit once a year and then realise I've forgotten to make any of it or worse, don't want to make any of it because it feels very odd. So this year, one of my big resolutions sewing wise so I'm just leaning because I'm tired, um, was to keep track of what I make, what I don't make, and do these quarterly videos. You guys really liked the last one, so hopefully you've enjoyed this one as well. Um, today we're going to talk about what I've made so far, what is in the works, what is stalled a little bit, and some sort of pattern shift arounds and changes. So grab a cup of tea and let's chat. So because it's been a few weeks since I have vlogged, I thought I'd also do a little life update. Sorry, my chair has just slid down. There we go. So yeah, little update, um, first of all, I have had no time to film because all my weekends are booked. I know if you guys get this, I'm a lot busier in the summer. I think it's also because I have quite a few friends who are teachers and basically we cannot do anything during term time. There is, they're just along particularly with my job as well, where in teacher holidays, I tend to be incredibly busy with events, particularly at Christmas. And then during term time when I'm free, they're not. So we've been doing lots. We're going to the theatre a lot at the moment, um, which has been really fun. And yeah, just every weekend's booked. So I'm filming on a very dark Wednesday night. It's very sunny, but the sun has dipped below the hedge. So the lighting in here is appalling. Um, but we are where we are. And I really want to get on camera and chat to you guys because it has been a while. Um, if you see me looking this way, I've got my laptop because I actually made notes for this video, guys, can you believe? Um, but also, it's, it's just been a very busy time. So a little life update and also a little sort of, yeah, I don't know, let's, leave it, let's say life update. So obviously I'm starting my PhD in September, as most of you know, very exciting. Um, so I, it has been now confirmed. I'm stopping work mid-September full time. I then get like a week, 10 days off to do my PhD enrolment, to register at the uni, to meet, like basically to go to freshers and actually, well not freshers because I'm a PhD, this is like my third time doing this, but to go and meet other PhD students because I'm actually going to be at university longer than I was as an undergraduate, which is a weird feeling. Um, and I'm excited and I want to make sure I embrace the experience and I make the most of the things that are available to me, particularly clubs and societies if there's any um that I'd like to join or if there's any resources I want to make use of or you know I just want to be active so I've got this whole time off to engage with my induction stuff and then I go back to work part-time two days a week from the end of September until Christmas and that is my manager's on maternity leave so it's just a little bit of extra support I can help to train the new me but it's two days a week it's very manageable so this means two things First of all, it means I should actually have time to sew, which is brilliant. I'm not going to in any way deprioritize my PhD. My PhD I will be doing a full 35, 37 hour week on. However, I'm gonna do it at the times that work best for me. Personally, I write very well early in the morning and late at night, but there's a, there's a period between about 12 and four where I'm utterly useless. So I'm gonna try and use that time to sew and work out and film and, you know, I just, one of the nice things about being able to structure my own workload for the next four years is that I can actually, well, I can be a bit more honest with how I work best as well. It's it's a really fantastic opportunity. The other side of this is I will be becoming a freelancer. Um, so that has its own repercussions. Firstly, I'm gonna be doing so long, um, freelancing in the event world. But also I'm hoping to do some freelancing in the sewing world as well. So some of you may know this because you've seen my content, but I do some paid work with brands um, and I do a lot of sort of writing work as well and that kind of thing. So I'm excited to be a freelancer sort of in, in the sewing and craft space. I'm going to try and do a lot more on the blog I'm going to see get some fun collabs in the books. But I am obviously going to have to massively curtail fabric buying, pattern buying. So there's going to be a lot of thrifty sewing going on, which is really good though. It's really positive. Um, but it also means that 
If you are watching this and you're a brand, because I know there's a few of those there, and you would like to work with me, give me a shout, because I'd love to do that. Um, it'd be really fun. And I'm going to be freelancing as an event manager as well, because that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years. Um, and I'm, I like it. It's fun. I love being on site. I love having a radio on, wearing steel toe caps and, and making stuff happen. I, I really enjoy it. So I'm excited. It's going to be a big shift, big change for me, but I'm ready for it. And it feels very right and very natural. So super excited about that. Um, the other things going on in life at the moment, I have so many pattern tests. They all clump together. So I've just finished one for Holly Dennett. I'm so excited for you guys to see that pattern. And now I'm starting on two for size B sewing. Love working with Donna, fantastic. Um, wait for my fabrics to arrive at the moment and I will show them to you on Instagram maybe, but I've got some really cute fabrics coming. It's gonna be so fun. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on at the moment. And it does mean I can't really share what I'm doing, but when those garments come out, I'm gonna talk about them so much because already one of them is such a massive, massive favorite. And I'm so excited, it's gonna be great. So let's talk about my make nine. I'm gonna to list to this side for once. I'll put my make nine here. So that's the grid. Now, where am I at? So I have completed the closet core NYX, the My Handmade Wardrobe Wrap, and the Cashmere at Carlisle. They're all done. I'm testing myself here because I haven't actually got it in front of me. Um, however, I have updates. So I am going to be doing a collab with the Sewing Gardener, Lucy, to make the Friday Pattern Company Saturday set. Now, we talked about doing this in August. August has somehow happened. I was working at a massive event at the beginning of August and I completely forgot to message Lucy to actually arrange dates for this, but we are gonna do it. Um, Lucy, if you're watching, I promise I will message you as soon as I finish filming this um, and we will arrange a time because I really want that in my life. I think it's going to be so cute and really fun as well as a collab. I'm very excited. Lucy and I have sort of messaged on Instagram for a while. I love her account. If you don't follow her, you should. Uh, she's very wholesome. Love her sewing. Fantastic all round presence. So that hopefully will be the Friday Pattern Company Saturday set. We'll sort that out. In terms of what I'm thinking, my head is swinging wildly between a sort of bright red cotton, like a ditzy print or a polka dot or something, or going black poplin because I'd be able to wear that more. And also, I don't know, I feel like the shirt I'll be able to wear with like jeans and that is making sure the skirt's wearable. So I haven't quite found my dream fabric yet, but I really want it in my wardrobe. So we're gonna make it happen. So that's coming up. That is, that is gonna happen. I want it to happen this summer. Second one is in a box behind me. So on my list, I have the Closet Court Carolyn Pajamas. Now, the more I think about it, sorry, because the fabric I need back here as well. The more I think about it, how do I put this? the less enamoured I am with the cut of the closet core Carolyn. And I think what it is, is because I am, I think it's the way I sleep, I don't really like anything with a proper arm side or like with a proper sleeve sort of set in where it sits here. I find it sort of, I can find it constricting in the night. I sort of wriggle a bit. I don't like it. And if I feel uncomfortable, and the thing is, while well, I can wear shirts during the day, pyjamas have to be sleepable in. So I was thinking about this and then I saw on Stitch and Ink's Instagram, well, I've been thinking about it anyway, and sort of been numbing an eye. And then I saw on Stitch and Ink's Instagram that they were basically nearly running out of the final copies of the Paper Theory Agnes pyjamas. And they're one that have sort of been floating in my consciousness. So I decided to properly investigate and found that they are perfect because, and I'm gonna get them out of the box, they are what they are it's hard because pajamas are a they aren't they but then equally really it's the top i'm talking about i don't know if you can see that it's one continuous line so it's a super easy to make we love that but also it's going to give me that freedom that i really want when i sleep um love the pockets love the design so what i'm going to do actually is i'm going to make the shorts and pajama top 
version first and then if I love them I'll also make the actual pyjama bottoms because there's never a time I don't need pyjama bottoms and to do this I am using this fabulous fabric so it is sort of it's, it's like a navy blue but it's also kind of purpley if I hold it there maybe that's a better thing of the image um it's got these little sort of star daisies on it and then polka dots in between crucially it is a really good quality cotton poplin it's really nice really soft i think it's a cotton poplin yeah no it is um and it's a really good bit of fabric even better it's actually a remnant i could not resist buying so i have like i think i have like 2.8 meters of it and i feel like it was from stitch and ink originally actually which is a fun sort of full circle moment but i bought this last year going i will make pajamas out of it but i don't know which ones so now we have reached a fabulous point where i can stick the two together which is brilliant and i'm really excited about it although my brain instantly just realized then that i actually have enough to make the saturday set out of this we think nah nah it's navy and i'll never wear it because it's navy and none of navy is not the base color of my wardrobe and does not look good on me pajamas um so really really excited about this i am i was thinking about filming a sew along are we interested do we want to sew along for this let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see it some of my sew alongs recently haven't been as popular so you know i don't want to make them if you guys don't find them interesting but equally if you want to sew along for uh, the paper theory agnes with um a nice stable cotton and i can do lots of voiceovers if there's a way you'd like me to do it say in the comments below but i'm more than happy to film that if it would be useful for you guys um so that is one ticked off the list i'm changing the pattern from the carolyn but it's one ticked off the list while we're there um stitch and ink i love them alicia put some little spare labels in which was really cute and i also bought this this fabric now <laughs> i'm not normally a zebra print girl but there's something about red zebra print that's just really fun um i, I kind of love it i don't know it's just really pretty and i like it so something's gonna get made in it. it it was very much a this sparks joy and i actually don't have i've really run down my stock of viscoses so this is adding to the pile and i'm very happy it's very very lovely and i'm excited to sew with it um just double checking yeah that's the box clear fabulous so that's two of my eight nine either on the way or taken care of i have the pattern i have the fabric it's gonna happen in terms of updates on the other one so the Alex coat will be, I'll start on it in September time, but I would like this blazer, sorry, there's a sloth around the neck of my mannequin at the moment, um, this blazer to be done before I start the coat. Now that blazer is a collab from the Carpe DM Stitcher that we started that collab in like November time. And basically my brain refuses to learn how to do belt pockets. I keep trying how to like, I just, I've watched YouTube tutorials. I've watched, I, I think I just need time to literally sit when my brain is clear or as clear as it's gonna get and like muscle my way through a couple and calico before I do it on here. But I, I just don't know. I feel like it's something I should be able to do. And I'm sure it's really not as bad as it feels like it will be, but it's a bit of a mental block at the moment. And I'd really, really like to have a blazer. So in my head, I want this blazer finished to be a PhD. I want to have my own me made blazer. That actually feels like a really nice sort of, sometimes if I give it some psychological meaning, I will just muscle through it and do it. So I think this is going to be my PhD blazer or my first of many PhD blazers. It's not a simple pattern, the Jessica blazer at all, but I, I want to give it a go. And even if what I end up with is a nice casual blazer to go around in, and it's not like super intense. That's fine by me. That's no problem at all, you know? I just want something, I just want a blazer that's me made that I feel comfortable in and then I can always upgrade and make a better one. But I'd like to get through my first one, definitely. Um, so after that, I will make the Alex coat. Now, I do actually have the main fabric for this. I can't remember if I've shown it on here before, but why not? Nothing to lose by showing it again. Now it doesn't look as good on camera as it does in person. It's a lot more sort of caramel brown here. It's fluffy. It's a big, big check wool. 
it's that sort of oh, I kind of like it because it's already fluffy so if it goes even fluffier it doesn't really matter but then the back of it's more like a sort of standard uh, wool so it's it's easy to work with it's sort of a wool I think it's got a little bit of poly to make it sort of mohair blend but quite happy with that it's going to be a big snuggly coat the Alex is a lovely cocoon pattern and considering I spend most of the winter wearing all black this is going to look really cute so that is going to happen I'm going to speed through my blazer I have a lot of live projects at the moment but I'm determined to get that blazer done, apart from anything, because poor Laura from the Carpe Diem Stitcher is waiting for me, so I do really need to crack on. But I think it's for a while I was like, right, for the collab, I'll make a different jacket, but I don't want to. I want to finish my blazer, I really do. Sorry, this is not this year's make line. This is last year's make line, um, but I am determined, so it's gonna happen. Um, other updates. So the Olivia blouse and the Vicky Sews pattern, I need to buy the pattern, but money is tight at the moment because I am a PhD student, so those are very much, it would be lovely to do them, but they're not quite as, quite as high on my priority list. Now, the other one is the Zoe dress. Now, this feels a little bit like heresy, but I just don't think I'm feeling it. I don't know. I think, I think I want something like it, but I don't want it like I want a jersey dress I mean I'm wearing one right now which I love um I want a strappy sort of tank jersey dress but I I just don't like the skirt on it I think that's what it is I don't like how it's almost I don't know it's almost drop wasted from where the skirt starts to flare and that I just think is not gonna make me feel good in it it's not about whether it's flattering or not I just don't think I'll feel like myself um so I don't know, I think I'm looking in a different direction for something like that, but for now, I think I'm just gonna scratch that one and say, I, I, just, I just don't wanna make it. Um, so whether it will get replaced with something similar or whether we're just gonna go, do you know what? Doesn't need to be on a make nine. When you see a pattern you like, make it, chill, no worries. Um, we'll think about it. But I think we're doing quite well so far. I'm also considering making a NYX dress now that I know from the blouse that it, you need to size down by about three sizes. By the way, public service announcement, if you didn't know this, you have to size down by like at least two dress sizes in the closet core NYX dress slash top to get it anywhere near the size that your body requires it to be. Or uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of ridiculous how much ease is in there. It makes me feel like there's actually been a mistake somewhere. But I think I probably will make another one, but I just don't know. I don't know if I want it to be like super floaty and like white and maybe broader on glares, in which case it's August, I'll probably wait till next year. We'll see. What have I learned from the last six months? So I think firstly, I've enjoyed having a make nine to think about in the background. It's helped to steer my sewing, um, particularly in months like this where I'm doing a lot of sewing for other people or I'm doing pattern tests or like I don't really have any of my own plans. This summer, side note, this summer I've been more social than I've been in years. My bank balance hates me. Um, and to be honest, I although it gets harder to film and harder to take photos, I'm very excited for September when I can start my PhD, when I can go back, to, it gets autumn and cold. And, Cause I mean, it's chucking it down at the moment. It might as well be September. Um, and I want to finish some projects before I start a whole new phase of my life, but I am really, really enjoying having my mate now running there as a companion and having, I don't know, it, it's kind of like when you're really tired and if you don't have time to sew, which I know a lot of people are like me and they have jobs or they have kids or they have jobs and kids or they have all sorts of other stuff that is making it hard for them to get to their sewing machine. I mean, I mean that response was incredible when I put out recently that I wanted to sew but I was literally nowhere near my machine what do you guys do and so many people were like I have this problem all the time I have Pinterest boards so that I can plan my next makes for me it's sort of when I do get the time to sew having my make nine stuff ready or fabric and patterns ready so I can just do a bit so it's not as mentally exhausting to think oh god right I've got to choose something to do and like xyz so that's been really fun and it's, it's been a bit of a godsend really. In terms of what's next, so hopefully the Saturday set, um, I will message you Lucy, I will, I promise. Um, and 
Saturday set. Agnes PJs. They're probably gonna get made first because I really want them. I'm just I'm just the wrong temperature at the moment in bed. Um I'm sleeping in one of Adam's t-shirts at the moment, which is really nice though. Um he's a very generous man. I I should say, like, we've been together for years. I never steal his clothes. I'm not we never like we never it's like when I'm ill, he'll give me one of his hoodies if I'm a bit sad, but at the moment, I just can't get comfortable in any of my pyjamas, so I might need to emergency make the Agnes pyjamas when I get back from Birmingham this weekend. Oh yeah, also, I'm going to Birmingham this weekend, so as you read this, um, I read this? What's my brain doing? As you watch this, I will be on the train up to Birmingham, and I would love to know good fabric shops in Birmingham. There's a few. We won't have use of a car. My friend lives up there. She's a teacher, and we'll be going and sort of doing some shopping and mooching, going for dinner and that kind of stuff. I'm staying with her then coming back Sunday. So if there's any fabric shops at all that we can visit or anyone I can pop in and say hello to in fabric shops, um, let me know in the comments below. I would love that. It would be so, so nice um, to visit some fabric shops that I've never been to before. Uh, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. It's been lovely to be back on YouTube. I'm not quite my polished self at the moment because I'm very very tired work is taking a bit of a toll at the moment but i wanted to be here i want to come on instagram tell you guys how i'm getting on and also for me i find it kind of motivating as well because it reminds me firstly there's a lovely community of sewists out there many of whom are, are just as busy as i am so i find it very inspiring when i see you guys sewing as well um and also as a bit of accountability because i do want to do these projects and i do find it really useful to sort of be able to to talk about them because that's for me that's what makes me get passionate about stuff again is talking about it so yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be great we're gonna get loads of stuff done we're gonna have a super productive august and then we'll go into september hopefully with a blazer definitely with lots of pattern tests done and hopefully with a couple more make nines done until next time thank you so much for watching guys um i'll see you soon